While the Lost Levels wasn't at all an adequate game, the original Super Mario Bros was a worthy successor to the arcade titles and one of the best games on the NES, which let's be real isn't the highest bar. So how do you make a follow up that's even better on this old piece of shit? Yeah, you take a random ass game and make it look like it fits into your franchise. You see, the US has never got Lost Levels, which seems to be the only W in their long catalogue of L's. What they, in every place outside of Japan, got is essentially a reskin of a random Japanese game, taking the original game's sprites and modifying them to fit in the Mario universe. Kind of? I mean, the game has a ton of wacky ass enemies that don't really fit side by side with a regular Goomba, so it seems like they really didn't try that hard here. But my god do I not care because I fucking love this game. Yeah, Mario 2 is amazing. Though it seems like it's the most overlooked game in the series solely due to the fact that it's a reskin of another game. And that really sucks too because like I said this game is great. First off the controls are just fucking perfection. You accelerate way faster and can stop on a whim even using Luigi. And air control is much better. There's also a new move, the super jump. This is a pretty iconic move and it returned in Mario Wonder but I'm really not that big of a fan of it. Holding down crouch for a few seconds will make you flash all sorts of different colours and when you see that you can press A to get an extra high jump. The reason I'm not really a fan of this move is that it just takes way too long to charge up and it ends up being unsatisfying to use. They should have taken the Wario Land approach where you simply just hold up and jump to use it since that's a far better approach. And with a few refinements this move could have been really great but as it is it's not too fun to use. Oh yeah there's new characters in this game. And with new characters also comes new playstyles and Mario 2 delivers. While Mario is just your all around guy, not excelling or failing in any category, and Luigi is of course a higher jumper but is slower to compensate, Toad and Peach have new playstyles and this game set how they will play for the rest of the series. Toad is probably my favourite character here. While he has a shitty jump and he relies on the super jump to get to some places, he runs the fastest out of the playable characters when he's holding an enemy. And Peach just straight up has a new ability. While she's one of the worst jumpers, she has the ability to briefly float in the air before coming back down. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention. Instead of stomping on enemies in this game, you actually have to stand on them and pick them up. And afterwards you can throw it at another enemy, which ends up being how you take them out. And I fucking love this, you don't need to put nearly as much effort in to simply stomp an enemy rather than throw another thing at it, it's a really good concept. You also don't need to pick up specifically an enemy, as in the ground are multiple different things you can uproot. Most commonly, you can find a vegetable that you can throw at an enemy. Sometimes you'll find a bomb, or maybe even an extra life. Hell, you can even find a power block in the levels themselves to wipe the screen of all the enemies. But what I want to focus on is the potion. Finding a potion and throwing it onto any given spot in the level will create a door out of nowhere. Going into this door transports you to a subspace briefly, and in subspace you can find coins that can be used in the slot machine to have a chance of gaining an extra life, or warp a few worlds ahead by placing a potion on the top of a certain pot. And if you place the potion in the right spot you can even find a mushroom, one of the small selection of 4 power ups in the game. The mushroom is the most basic of them. It'll restore all your health and even give you an extra hit point. Collecting 5 cherries will spawn a superstar at the bottom of the screen, to which it very, very slowly floats upward. But other than that, it functions just about the same as it does in the previous games. It makes you invulnerable temporarily. But oh, as a boss isn't much. You just have to pick up the eggs she shoots at you and throw them back at her. But the issue arises when you realise she's the boss of almost every level in the game. Later editions of the fight have her shooting fireballs alongside eggs, and even just fireballs, needing you to defeat her with nearby blocks. But it is essentially the same gameplay loop and it gets so fucking repetitive. I get why it's done. They want levels to end in a little challenge. But if they're not going to make a unique challenge every time, just don't use it. What's worse is that the boss itself isn't even that good. I'm really glad that there are other bosses used for the final level of each world. Because I'm sorry to the 11 Birdo connoisseurs, but this fight is pretty bad. Oh yeah, what are the other bosses anyway? There's 6 other bosses in the game, and this is a really damn good collection. Mauser is the first you encounter. Being the first boss in the game, he's pretty simple and not too hard to take down. He rapidly throws bombs and you have to quickly pick them back up and put them back on the platform he's standing on before they explode. Despite the difficulty, he's a pretty damn fun boss helped by his amazing design. Being encountered in World 2, Triclad is up next. He attacks by shooting a short stream of fireballs towards you, and you have to throw the nearby blocks at him and dodge the fireballs simultaneously. But honestly, I'd never find the fireballs to be that intrusive. It's really easy to dodge them, making the fight as a whole really easy, even more so than Mauser. But I never really minded it considering it's just satisfying to strike him in the face with a high velocity block. Okay now Fry Guy is a good boss. He'll fly around the arena shooting fireballs downwards and you have to be diligent enough to pick up and throw blocks at him. After 3 hits he'll split into 4 mini Fry Guys and you have to take them out one by one. 
I don't really have much to say other than it's a fantastic boss, and I must I gotta say, I'm not a fan of the arena. It's pretty cramped, and it's pretty hard to navigate as Toad specifically, but props for making such a good boss. These bosses seem to just be getting better and better, because next up is Claw Grip. He'll throw rocks at you at one of three different angles, and you have to be quick enough to grab them before they fall off the screen, which can actually be pretty hard. After that, you have to throw them back at him. I really love how quick your reflex to have to be for this fight. I also really love how there's a safe zone here where you can't get hit but you also can't pick up rocks. It really adds strategy to where you can either take it easy but in return take longer or go balls off the walls with this shit and do it all with no safety. I think we're at the first drop off in the boss category which sucks considering we just had one of my favourite bosses in the series. And it sucks even worse considering the wonderful introduction he has. So yeah at the end of each level there's a crystal ball and after you pick it up this bird mouth gate thingy will open up which ends up being the exit to the level or in some cases the entrance to the boss. And here it looks like the exact same deal. But there are throwing blocks as seen used in previous bosses. Bosses, and a key now will spot them, and it sort of creates this looming feeling that this room might be more than an exit, or if the throwing blocks are just decoration. And then you pick up the crystal ball, and the bug gate comes to life. It's a super good intro that sets up the threat in a super simple but effective way. But the boss itself? Eh. I mean, it's not bad, but I'm kind of left wanting more considering this is the fight before the final boss. All it does is fly around similarly to Fry Guy and take damage on contact. After 3 hits from the block, so you can use it to get to the final boss. Wow, what a waste of time. I mean, like, again, the sub version is great. Super well done, but the boss itself is just fine. Could be better, but I'm not losing sleep over it. But here we go, the final encounter with Bat. So who the fuck is that? Uh, I guess this is the final boss. This toad thing moves back and forth and burps out nasty bubbles that you need to avoid. To take out the weirdo, you need to grab the vegetables shot at by this machine and throw them into his mouth. I guess that explains his fat fucking stomach, he's just allergic to healthiness. But you need to be diligent enough to throw them into his mouth before he spits the bubbles, because the bubbles destroy the vegetables and it's over. Yeah, I, I guess that was a fine enough fight. I mean, it's fun for what it is, but just like, really? I'd say this boss is probably the hardest in the game, but it's still pretty damn easy. And it just sort of feels anticlimactic. And still, we took down whatever its name was, and the day is saved. Which is all that really matters, I guess. I except no, fucking for some reason the game is just a dream. Good golly gracious, how unique. But I really do love this ending sequence. It shows the entire cast of the game, from the playable characters, to the enemies, to the bosses. And this is helped a lot by the super solid presentation. Honestly, despite Mario World looking objectively better, I think this is my favourite game presentation wise until Mario Sunshine, which is like 7 games from now. Despite the main characters having blank stares most of the time, the art style of this game just exudes this charm that I can't really describe, I just really like it. All the enemies have really good designs, especially with the bosses with the Mouser and Fry Guy. And for some reason I really fucking like the look of the casino screen, the colours are very nice there. The levels also look really nice. Speaking of the levels, how are they? I'm just gonna get straight into it, my god did they improve on this shit. In the original game there was maybe 3, 4 good levels, but here I think I liked around half the levels which is definitely a good amount. Especially the first world, every stage from that world is fantastic. I also really love how expansive the levels are. Mario 1 felt a bit small in scope so I really appreciate the size increase. There's also tons of level themes which I like. Sure we have the regular overworld and cave themes which have already been done before, but added to the series are desert, ice and sky themes. And while the nighttime overworld theme has already been done, I still really like the concept though it doesn't really matter. The levels just feel alive in general. The super vibrant and colourful and there's enough decorations to why the levels don't feel empty. I also like little details like the vines and clouds being animated. Little things like that make the stages feel way more lived in. I also really like how some parts of the levels are vertically oriented. It makes platforming a lot more varied considering enemies are often less avoidable and in turn feel more obstructing. That Mario 1 bullshit is still intact though. Like this one level where you have to ride an egg shop by Birdo to get anywhere. But I'm also glad that they weren't afraid to experiment like in 5-1 where these fish dudes are used as platforms. Which is a really clever way to make use of the fact that you can stand on enemies. Speaking of enemies, they really improved on the enemy count here. Because while the original game had around 10, this game is over double. The soundtrack is also just fucking amazing, even if there isn't too many songs. With Mario 1 I liked about two songs, but with this soundtrack the songs are consistently good, with the highlights being the character select, underground and subspace themes. I'm not gonna lie, and I may end up changing my mind later, but I think this is gonna be the peak of the series for a good few games. Which I guess is a little concerning considering we're at game 2, but it's for sure going up above Mario 1 on the ranking for me, and I think it's gonna be at least in the top 3 by the end of the video. What's next? Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll try it out. 
I didn't really like this game that much when I first played it, but you know, opinions can change. But while this game has a chance of being in my top 5 best Mario games by the end of the video, I highly doubt it's going to be in my top 5 favourites. I usually like a game when it's underrated and dislike a game when it's overrated. Like, I'm a huge fan of Ristar. I think it's probably the best Sega Genesis game and I don't even think it's close. But with Super Mario Bros 3, even if I like the game, I'm probably gonna come out of the game feeling less positive than I really should. Because people fucking love this game and say it's one of the best of all time. And whenever I see people say that, I hit it with an oh brother. Because goddamn, do people love to dick ride games that aren't deserving of it. But still, I may as well give the game a chance. But as for right now, play Super Mario Bros 2 because it's 100% worth your time.